Hey everyone. So today we're going to talk about some geometry and we are going to look at quadrilaterals. I want you to say quadrilateral one time slow, three times fast, and two times in an accent. Okay, I know you guys love that. All right, so quadrilaterals, those are going to be shapes that have four sides. Any shape that has four sides. If it does not have four sides, it's not a quadrilateral. So those are pretty easy to identify. Let's look at this one. Is it a quadrilateral? No, because it only has three sides. This is a triangle. What about this? It does have four sides. It is a quadrilateral. Do you know what kind of shape it is? It's a parallelogram because it has two sets of parallel lines. We know that parallel lines are lines that will never intersect. They will never meet. It can't just have one set. It has to have two sets. What about this shape? Four sides. So, yes, it's a quadrilateral. Not a parallelogram. It is a trapezoid. The reason why it's not a parallelogram is because it only has one set. This line and this line will never meet. But these, they would intersect. The shape. Pretty easy one. Yes, it is a quadrilateral. And it is a square. So what we are going to do is make what's called a hierarchy. It's kind of a hard word to say, hierarchy. And it's a way to put these shapes in a system. And we can tell what traits they share and what traits they don't share. You often think of hierarchies when you see family trees. So, you know, if you picture those with like the grandparents up top and then their kids and then their kids and so on. Also, you might see it with like a king at the top and a queen and then the prince and the princess and the duchesses and all of those types of things. So that's sometimes that you might see hierarchies. So we're going to do one with the quadrilaterals. If I can get this marker open. Okay. So, one type of quadrilateral that we've already talked about is the trapezoid. There are different types of trapezoids, but we're just going to talk about this one for right now. So, we have a trapezoid. It's going to be over here by itself because, it yes, it's a quadrilateral, but it doesn't share some of the other traits that these other shapes have. Okay. And then we are going to do a parallelogram. So remember, this is our parallelogram. In order to be a parallelogram, you have to have two sets of parallel sides. Okay, so next let's think of some shapes that would fit underneath parallelograms. Do you know of any shapes that are also parallelograms? I actually don't have this one, but a rectangle. A rectangle... That shape has two sets of parallel sides. I can draw it on there. We all know what a rectangle is. So we've got this set and this set. It's four lines, but it's two sets. And that rectangle isn't perfect, but we will move on. Okay, so we also are going to look at this. This is not a diamond. A diamond is a three-dimensional shape. What do we call this? It's not a slanted square. It is a rhombus. OK. 
Okay. And now we're going to look at the square. Is the square a parallelogram? Yes, it is. It has two sets of parallel lines. But the square can also be called other shapes. In order to be a rectangle, you have to have opposite sides equal. So that means that these two lines, that are opposite, are the same length. And these two are the same length. So, so far, does this meet the criteria to be a rectangle? Yes, it does, because these two are the same. These two are the same. Okay, you also have to have four right angles. So, we know that right angles, that would be in the corners of all of these. Did, does this have four right angles? Yes, it does. And it also has to be a parallelogram. Well, we already know it's a parallelogram because we've classified it that way. Is this a parallelogram? Yes. So the square can also be considered a rectangle. So yes, this is a square, but it can also be classified as a rectangle. Okay, now in order to be a rhombus, you have to have all four sides equal. So can a rhombus be a rectangle? No, because in a rectangle, all four sides are not equal. But a rhombus, all four sides are equal. Are all four sides equal? Yes, they are. Okay. Also, your opposite angles have to be equal. So this angle and this angle, this angle and this angle. And that's the same for the square. The opposite angles are equal. We know that because they're all equal. You also have to be a parallelogram. So if you turn a rhombus this way, we know that it's a parallelogram. And not all parallelograms are rhombuses. For example, the rectangle and also this parallelogram. It's a parallelogram, it's quadrilateral, but it's not a rhombus because why? All four sides are not equal. So because the square fits the rhombus, it's also considered a rhombus. So the square can be considered a square, a rhombus, a rectangle, a parallelogram, and a quadrilateral. A trapezoid, none of these things. Okay, I was looking for one and I don't think I have one, but we also have a kite. Hmm, it's not too great. Let me work on that a little. Okay, it's just getting worse. I'm going to erase that and make a new one so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so with a kite, your adjacent sides are equal. That means the sides that are touching. So these two sides are equal. When you see lines like that, that means that they're equal. And these two are equal but I'm just going to make two lines this time because they're not equal to these, they're equal to these. So it's a new set of equal lines. What else do we know about the kite? Is the kite a parallelogram? Is the kite a quadrilateral? Could the kite be considered a rhombus? Could the kite be considered a rectangle? Could the kite be considered a square? Well, we know it can't be a square because all four sides are not equal. The cool thing about this square is nothing can be a square but a square. The square can be lots of other things, but nothing can be a square but a square. Okay. Could the kite be a rectangle? Well, it doesn't have 90 degree angles, so it can't be that. Could it be a rhombus? 
Brahmas has to have four sets of equal sides. So it's not going to be a rhombus either. So it can't be considered any of those things. Or yeah, I'm doing a video. You want to say hey to everybody? Bye. She misses everyone. Okay. Let's see if we can get back to where we were. Now, could any of these things be considered a kite? Well, in order to be a kite, you have to have adjacent sides equal. You also have to have opposite angles equal. So these are equal and these are equal. So that means that a square could also be considered a kite because it fits the definition. So I know when you look at this, you're not going to say, oh, that's a kite. You're going to give them a more precise definition and say it's a square. But this standard all focuses on what they also can be considered based on their definitions. And based on its qualifications to be a kite, it, that also fits for the square. So remember, the kite can't be a square, but the square can be a kite. So the square and the rhombus actually fit to be a kite.